Hey everybody, do you really here? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Color X Malice along IG and Augie's route. And man, there has been so much deductive reasoning to read through in this. So hopefully people that are listening to this have been enjoying listening to the explanations read out loud to them instead of having to instead of having to sit there and uh, read through them. I think it's a little bit easier to listen to them than to read them since the uh, details of these things can be a little dry sometimes. But yeah, now we're officially teamed with Yanagi. Let's see how our partnership starts out. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Excess love can become a dangerous weapon. This is doubly true for delusional love. A terrified woman is threatened on a nightly basis, yet the police ignore her plight. Adonis will let fall the hammer of judgment for all our fellow women who have endured such terror. X day. Only 23 days until rebirth. Back to Ichika. December 8th, 1.05 p.m. Death by fire. It appears that way. The station was abuzz with talk about the incident that occurred this morning. The crime scene investigation was already done, and the investigators were returning. They would likely planned how to deal with it. It could take a while for them to get an idea on the victim. Yeah. SRCPO hadn't been asked to deploy today. We were on standby in the station. Awfully bold of them to pull this first thing in the morning at a park in the residential area. Psyche had just shown up at the station and joined our conversation with a frown. Did they leave one of those coins this time? Yeah, it's still being analyzed, but this is unlikely to be a copycat crime. Plus, they did release another video, so there's little doubt that it's Adonis' is doing. There was a homicide just yesterday, though. And they really upped their schedule. Yeah, something seemed to miss here. The videos accompanied all prior murders. There hadn't ever been consecutive incidents. This would mark a departure from their previous M.O. What's changed since yesterday's crime? It hit me once I thought about it. Almost unconsciously, I touched my neck. It didn't start yesterday. Not if I considered my collar as an incident. Ever since I was attacked, the crimes had deviated from their carefully planned nature. Hey, are you okay? Oh, Psyche. He'd stuck his face in mine while I was deep in thought. My heart almost burst with shock. I'm fine, it's nothing. I was just thinking to myself. I understand. Anyone would be feeling pretty down after seeing this happen two days in a row. Death by gunshot, and now fire? I bet the fire hurt a lot. Definitely not a way I would choose to go. <sighs> Saiki hung his head bitterly. His voice was sad, mourning the victims. It made me worry about his well-being. He was a gentleman. Quit making that face, Saiki. Feeling sad won't help solve these cases. Mochida claps Psyche on the shoulders in an attempt to lift his spirits. We should do whatever we can to help out. You should try and ensure this doesn't happen again. Yes, of course. This was no time to feel sorry. Anger began to well up in my chest. They say they're delivering justice and judgment, but this is unforgivable. It was clear that they were enjoying the notoriety that came with the killings. We absolutely couldn't let Adonis continue. We wouldn't let these killers do as they pleased. I swore this to myself. Right. So let's knuckle down and get to work. Return to your post, Saiki. Haven't you finished your report? Ah, oh, right. I need to turn it in. See ya. That's the spirit. I need to follow one too. Hoshino, I'll leave the rest to you. Yes, sir. After I watched Mochida and Saiki leave, I took out my phone what I can do right now. Regardless, there was something off about Adonis' activities over the past several days. I wanted to collect my thoughts, so I decided to text Yanagi. Has the team gotten a rundown of today's events yet? We've heard the gist from Sasazuka. Was there a matching coin? Maybe. They're still analyzing it. I'll ask again later. Also, this came up yesterday. Something's different about the way Adonis is operating now. My hands paused after I typed out the text. 
Something was definitely different now. And the reason I settled on was... Leadership might have changed. The people giving the orders... Have we considered that the head of the organization might have changed? That's certainly a possibility. Good. It looks like I wasn't off base. It was just a possibility, but we couldn't rule it out. That's what I thought. We'll try looking into that. <sighs> His reply to my hypothesis seemed a bit more curt than I expected. I wonder if I said something strange. I hesitated to send my additional text after an unexpected response. Huh? Another text came. I thought it was Yanagi, but when I looked at the message, it was from a different sender. Work going well. Shiraishi? That's out of nowhere? I was surprised that Shiraishi had texted me, and the confusion made me tilt my head. Probably. By work, he didn't mean my actual job. He was likely referring to the demands that the people who put this collar on me made. The truth of the X day incidents, I doubt it would be revealed so easily. Is he toying with me again? Not so much. Still, there was little point to lying to him. I sent off an honest reply. Didn't you pair up with Yanagi? Yes, but I have work, and I'm not sure where I should start with this. Don't you think you've been leaning on Yanagi too hard from the get-go? Uh, I felt like Shirashi's message had opened up my eyes. Oh, don't trust him, he's gonna lead you somewhere astray. He's right. I have to work on my own. I was Yanagi's support, so I'd passively been waiting for Yanagi to act. The coin they found today matched. That was a new piece of information. The coin matched. It was proof that Adonis was behind this. Understood. Thank you. I quickly replied and then stood up. I wanted to go speak to Shiraishi directly. I looked around and saw that Mochida had just returned to his desk. Mochida, may I leave my desk for a bit? Oh? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I'll be right back. Maybe you thought I was going to the restroom, but Mochida let me go without a fuss. I gave him a small bow and left the room. Huh? When I went to visit Shirashi, the door was open for some reason. He was expecting... I can hear voices inside. I knew I should come back later if he was busy, but I decided to peek inside. What a scumbag! Oh, it's the committee! Ah, I just can't take it. I can't take this anymore. Huh? Sakuragawa furiously came storming out of the room. Ah, he makes my skin crawl. If I wasn't at work, I'd kill him. Uh, excuse me? My voice was meek, as I was intimidated by her being on the warpath. Eh? Uh? Sakuragawa finally noticed me and reacted with surprise. Oh, it's just you. What are you doing here? Um, well, I have business with Shiraishi. Huh? Oh, God. Huh? I'm sorry, I didn't know. Sakuragawa rolled her eyes back in derision, and I couldn't help but tremble. S sakuragawa Why? He's not really related to your job. Actually, more than you know. Or is this part of your work with Yanagi's team? Or is it... personal? Unfortunately, it's not personal anymore. Eh? Um, uh... I faltered, not able to spit out a word. Well, which is it? W why is she acting like I did something wrong? Well, I guess I'd have to say it's personal. No, you should have said it's regarding Yanagi. Because that's the truth. Eh. We were actually both part of Yanagi's team, but I wanted to speak with Shiraishi for personal reasons. Not really. When I replied honestly, Sakuragawa's eyes bulged, and she began shaking for some reason. Not that kind of personal! Come on, girl! Calm down! Calm down, Sakuragawa. You're going to disturb Hoshino. Mukai! Mukai had suddenly appeared to rescue me from damnation. Heavenly intervention, indeed. 
I sighed in relief. Oh, hail Mukai. The director's inside, Hoshino. But, could we have a moment with you first? Huh? Are we going to the interrogation room again? We have something very important to discuss. Mukai's smile was unnerving, and I wanted to run. I no longer felt relieved at all. <laughs> this way, please. Um, okay. We are going to the interrogation room again. Of course, she wasn't about to let me run. Mukai took a firm grasp of, grasp of my arm and also pushed Sakuragawa along. Gonna get the same CG again? Somehow, I'd been dragged into the audio room at the end of the hall. Um... Mukai quietly gestured at a chair, and I sat down, seeing no opportunity to resist. Yep, here we are again. Mukai also sat down at a chair in front of the desk, and Sakuragawa leaned in, listening. Oh, I have a question for you. W what is it? This felt like an interrogation. What did I do? I broke out in a cold sweat as I wondered what those intense faces were about to ask me. What sort of relationship do you have with the director? What? Mukai's question didn't register in my brain at all. You can't lie to us. Just be honest. My relationship with Shiraishi, why are they being so intense about it? These two women had called me out and were grilling me on my relationship to Shiraishi. Where'd they get this idea anyway? It's not like I even hung out with him. Could it be... Is it like women confronting each other in dramas? Hey, what's your relationship with him? You just met him, so just back off. He belongs to me. <laughs> Something like that? Thinking this, I tilted my head, puzzled. Um, might you two be interested in Shiraishi? Oh god. I think he just set off a bomb there. I tentatively asked trying to get a feel for the situation. What? Their response was perfectly in sync. Apparently I was wrong. From the looks of pure disgust on their faces, I could tell they felt the exact opposite. Um, what is this about then? Well, that's what we want to ask you. As you know, the director has earned a reputation for being quite the eccentric. He can't take a hint, and he doesn't remember names and faces. He needles people, makes fools out of them like it's normal. He gets all OCD when solving mysteries, rambling madly to himself while smiling. His weird behavior knows no bounds. Eccentricity is putting it nicely. That guy is twisted at his core. He likes to anger people to savor their reactions, and harassment is like a fine wine to him. R right. I was aware that he was strange, but I honestly had no idea of the extent. I thought he was a man that was difficult to read, but... Because he's that way, women avoid him as well as men. You may be fooled by his pretty face, but he'll kill that delusion fast. Yet, you know how he acts, and you've personally come to call on him. You did say it was for personal reasons. Yeah, personal to me, not personal between us. So please be honest with us. What is your relationship with the director? Uh, no... This is a big misunderstanding. Now I knew what they wanted, at least. I still had no idea why they were so intense. I think they're basically concerned for your soul. Basically, they suspected me of having a romantic relationship with Shiraishi. We're acquaintances, or colleagues, maybe? Well, anyway, it's definitely not romantic. It was difficult to put into words. I tried to summarize it. We're fellow teammates? Team members? Then, if you want to know, I'll gladly tell you. Oh no, please don't start any misunderstandings. Gah! That girl and I, we have a secret relationship, right? You're asking me? I, I knew it! Don't trust him! You know better! Listen, Hoshino, don't let him fool you. Huh? Huh? With that remark, Sakuragawa bolted from the room in a flash. Mukai was actually staggering. She looked physically ill. <laughs> I think you girls are overreacting just a little bit. Shiraishi, who had suddenly appeared and dropped the bomb, was just smiling. 
Um, Mukai? Are you okay? Well, I thought I was prepared to hear it, but the shock of having a confirm was so overwhelming that I can't even think. Um, Miss Hoshino, it pains my compassionate heart to see such a young woman with her entire life before her throw it in the sewer like this. If I may say and be so bold, you have unimaginably poor taste. <sighs> I didn't know how to react in the face of such profound misunderstanding. Oh, let it go. Maybe they'll forget about it eventually. But all is not lost. If you tire of him, come ask me for help. I'll send an invitation to our club. Okay, enough of the weird insinuations. The girl is innocent, unlike you lot. How rude. It's because she's so innocent that you shouldn't be getting intimate with her. And, Director, if you feel so strongly about her, make sure you actually use her full name. Understand? <sighs> Shirashi kept his wordless smile. So you'd forgotten my name, probably. How could you not even remember the name of your girlfriend? Um, like I said, you're misunder- Even a friend should show some shame. At this rate, you'll provoke divine retribution. Enough of the name-calling and insults. Heaven will strike me down one way or another. The girl and I have something to discuss in private, so would you mind stepping outside? Are you sure, Director? If you do anything improper to her inside the station, you won't get away with it. That's out of the question. Please be careful, Hoshino, and don't be fooled by his masculine wiles. <laughs> masculine wiles, as opposed to feminine wiles. I've never heard that one before, actually. That's cute. Okay. Before I had a chance to explain anything, Mukai spun on her heel and left. Um, I think there's been a gigantic misunderstanding. Huh, that's fine. You wanted to see me about something. What do you need? Something you couldn't say in front of the others? I shook my head in reply to his teasing. It wasn't the time for that. I wanted to talk to you about the cases. Well, I figured as much. Let's head back to my office first. Shirashi looked a little bored. Well, you're the one who baited me. You should have expected as much. Pretty sure you were doing it on purpose. The girl from forensics came by just now to discuss the coin. A coin? So there was a match. He texted you that. Did you forget already? Yeah. Investigations HQ's stance is that this case differs in a few ways from previous cases. They suspected it was a copycat crime, so they were being careful. But the coin's absurdly detailed as always. It's an exact match. I see. They still haven't identified the victim? Not yet. Burn victims can take a while to identify. Well, the suspect's profile was so easy it bored me. Well, you already built a profile? Of course. Adonis was kind enough to give us hints in their announcement. The announcement? A terrified woman is threatened on a nightly basis, yet the police ignore her plight. Adonis will let fall the hammer of judgment for all our fellow women who have endured such terror. That means there's some connection to the July incident. All I could recall about July was that a male stalker had been killed. Oh, you've given this more thought than I expected. Please, stop teasing me. Even as an amateur, I understand that much. But I was complimenting you this time, I'm not making fun of you. If it wasn't a copycat crime, might Adonis have changed their methods? I wonder whether the consecutive events of yesterday and today are a shift in plans. What do you think, Shirashi? Well, conventional wisdom would state that this isn't part of the plan. Conventional wisdom? What do you... This would be pointless if I just told you the answer. Shirashi interrupted me as I tried to ask why. Raising his index finger. It wouldn't just tell me. How familiar are you with the details of the X-Day cases? I've made an effort to thoroughly memorize everything that was available to me. Pretty confident in your memory skills, eh? Can I assume that you've got more than an amateur's level of knowledge then? I guess I'm about to get tested. I didn't just use the databases. I looked into rumors here, as well as on the internet. I'm pretty confident in my knowledge. I see. You are quite serious about this assignment, now that you're paired with Yanagi. That's not exactly it. 
It's more like, I don't want to drag him down. <laughs> then let me test whether your efforts have actually paid off. Have you determined the goal of the X-Day cases up to this point? Revenge, right? Correct. Now, let's drill down the specific type of vengeance that was enacted each month. How about April and May to start? The April and May incidents exposed police scandals. The only victim whose body was found at the scene was guilty of... Mistaken arrests. Well done. Looks like you really have been studying. Now, what about the July incident? I could probably answer all these without even a guide. The July case had a connection to today's homicide. And that would be... Stalking! Well done. Looks like you really have been studying. And August? This case was related to yesterday's events. The victim's occupation had a connection to the commonality shared by the August victims. That would be the internet bullying. Well done. Looks like you really have been studying. You said that already. The motives behind September and November are unclear, so we'll set those aside for now. We can assume that the crimes from April to August had easy-to-understand motives. The suspects that these motives led us to were no secret, of course. But they all had alibis, didn't they? That's right. So, do you know what that means? The suspects with clear motives had alibis. But how could they make their motives a bit more unclear? Someone instead of the ringleaders who had motive acted in their stead? Correct. Now, let's return to the previous topic. Let us presume that the recent consecutive homicides were not part of Adonis' plan. What would you conclude if that were true? They were unplanned. In other words, these two weren't carefully planned premeditated revenge murders. The people with motive to commit murder could have passed the task to someone else. Is that what you're implying? Shiraishi's prompting led me to that response. When I voiced it, suddenly it all made sense. Yes, very good. That would be the natural thing to think. Well, I think the police will find suspects for today's and yesterday's crimes very quickly. So far, Adonis had planned their crimes so no connections could be made back to the revenge-fueled perpetrators. But it was possible that the recent killings were committed by those seeking revenge. I understand this even less now. Are they trying to tell us to catch them? We don't know. Honestly, I wonder what they're planning. Shiraishi shrugged, murmuring to himself, playing dumb. Huh? Had I just imagined that? Shiraishi was still smiling, but I thought I saw a flash of anger. Uh-huh. So he's not happy with some part of this. December 8th, 946. <sighs> I finished work and was on the way home. I had been thinking all day. As expected, this is incredibly complex. I had thought about what Shiraishi said. There was too much that I still didn't grasp. I also hadn't found any concrete leads, and Yanagi hadn't contacted me. Did I ever text him about the coin being real? He might have been helping me save face. It had cheered me up when Yanagi asked me to help him. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized he hadn't expected much. Well, he's still also worried about your safety. He doesn't want to get you too into it. The collar was our only connection to Adonis, Put bluntly, it's all I contribute. I had no applicable experience, and my academy scores were low, aside from marksmanship. What can I do to help? Time to go home. I momentarily pondered whether or not I should meet Yanagi, but I was already walking home. In my current state, I doubted that I would be of much help to him if I saw Yanagi anyway. Ugh, why is she here? Why are you so surprised? You're both going home, why don't we say hi? Huh? I have been lost in thought while walking when I heard voices behind me. They sounded familiar. Oh, fancy meeting you two here. Kazuki! Ah, oh, my angsty little brother. 
And Akito, you adorable little thing. Do you have a crush on my brother? I turned around in a panic. My brother Kazuki and his friend Akito were there. What are you doing out this late? Another murder happened today, you know. They closed school today because of the murder. There's nothing to do at home. His rebellious glare worried me more. His boredom didn't make this okay. You had the day off because it's dangerous. You're not supposed to go out and about. We're sorry, Ichika. Kazuki was just worried about me. Huh? He's been feeling down lately, so I went to hang out with him. It sounds like it's tough at home for him. I felt some of the worry alleviate as he muttered that and avoided eye contact. I couldn't fault him for helping Akito, for trying to help out a friend. It's still dangerous to be outside. If things at home make it hard for Akito to stay there, then he can stay at our place. Ugh, you're annoying. Who cares whether or not we're at home if we don't know when we could die? Kazuki? He seemed to spit the words out. Is there any place that'll be totally safe? Can you guarantee I won't just be killed at home? I... Even the people at school who act like they're excited about the murders when they happen are actually scared to death inside. They're all worried that they'll be next. His voice was tinged with overflowing anxiety. I was painfully aware of how that felt. Adon has called their murders righteous judgment. I say that only bad guys will be targeted, but that's not reassuring at all. There isn't anyone alive that hasn't committed some kind of wrongdoing. <sighs> Even if they've been trapped in this town, it doesn't mean we're free from them. I can't stand being chained up anymore. They said something's going down in January. When that hits, it'll be the end of Shinjuku. Everything here might be all gone someday. Just let me go enjoy the time I have left. <sighs> Only one month remained in the countdown. X day was scheduled for January. I can't believe I only felt the urgency just now. Really? We were running out of time. Even Kazuki was riddled with anxiety. I had known about it intellectually, but I hadn't really understood the situation. Please, I'm worried about you, Kazuki. There wasn't much time left. I didn't want him to give in to his despair. You probably won't be able to attend classes regularly from now on, right? Look, I'm not telling you to stay home. Just be careful. <sighs> Kazuki didn't nod. I expected as much, but it still hurt. But I guess maybe he won't be reckless if he's with Akito. I felt ashamed as his older sister, but I was left to rely on Akito to keep Kazuki safe. Thinking that, I turned to Akito. Akito, are you okay? Are you feeling sick? I saw that Akito's skin tone was a bit off. More than off. He was looking ghastly blue. I'm fine. Oh. Sorry, this got weird. We're going. Kazuki also seemed to notice his friend's condition, and he left with him in concern. <sighs> I watched the two of them hustle off, and then I turned to leave as well. I was going to see Yanagi. Well, I decided to after all. There's no time left. I didn't have the luxury of waiting to figure out what I could do. Kazuki could very well be the next victim. I didn't even want to think about that. Yep, time to get on the ball. Wasted enough time already. Excuse me, I'm coming in. Huh? Whoa, you scared me. Why are you popping in all of a sudden? Enomoto was the only one in the office. It looked like he hadn't expected me, and his eyes bugged out a little. Yeah, why didn't I call first? Um, where's Yanagi? Upstairs. Ah, the roof. Our place. Oh, on the roof? Thank you. Sure, sure. You're welcome. He looks so satisfied with that. Good job, Enomoto. There he is, beautifully smoking a cigarette. How can some people look so good doing something so bad? When I reached the top, I found Yanagi smoking and looking over the Shinjuku skyline. 
maybe he was thinking about something, because he didn't seem to notice me. His eyes looked so sad again. Those eyes, which gazed down at Shinjuku, were full of kindness and sorrow. Seeing him display his emotions like that made my chest feel tight. Yanagi. I didn't want to interrupt his break, but I screwed up my courage and called his name. Yanagi turned around to face me. He seemed a little surprised. Oh, it's you. Why'd you rush over? Oh, I'm sorry for not contacting you first. Nah, don't worry about it. I'll head downstairs. No, that's okay. You can keep smoking here. Yanagi was about to put out his cigarette. I didn't want to inconvenience him too much. Although, it's not good for your health. Yeah, I've been thinking about quitting. Smiling bitterly, Yanagi took another drag on his cigarette. If we get together, will you quit? Acrid fumes wafted into the air. I wanted to clear my head a little, so I figured I'd come up for a smoke. It cleared up some of my uncertainty. Uncertainty? Yeah. I recalled that he had said that here before. Everyone's lost about something sometimes. I'm also uncertain about something. I'm not sure what I can do to help. Before I said that I couldn't lose my way because I'm a police officer. But that was really overcompensating for my insecurity. I want to figure out how I can help. I at least want to face the right direction. So, Yanagi, could you please give me a directive? When I went straight to the point, Yanagi almost seemed to waver for a second. I asked you to support me, didn't I? When I talked to you, I organized my thoughts. That's plenty of help, so don't fret about it. It doesn't feel like enough. Are you being honest with me, Yanagi? What Okazaki was saying made sense, rationally speaking. And Yanagi wasn't the type to lie, but I could feel a hint of dishonesty there. It had to be a type of kindness that only someone who didn't lie would show. He's kind and forthright. I'd only known Yanagi for a few days, but I had no doubts about his character. Ever since we agreed to work together, I thought I was prepared for anything, but... Could it be that you don't want me working on the investigation? I looked straight into Yanagi's eyes. He made another bitter smile. Eh, hit the nail right on the head. He sighed softly and put out his cigarette. He walked over to me. What makes you think that? When we were here before, you said that you wanted to restore everyone's daily lives. Yeah. If you meant that, then you must be stressed. There's only one month left in the countdown. We no longer have the luxury of time. If you really wanted my help, you'd have asked more of me, gathering intel in the station or menial tasks or eavesdropping on people. If you can even make use of the collar, we should. It's worth trying despite the risk. But Yanagi didn't say anything. Was I supposed to be saying that out loud because this thing says we did? Or is it because you think I'm a hindrance to your investigation? A hindrance, huh? The fact that your collar relays information back to the criminals is certainly a drawback. But them seeing our cards doesn't hurt now. We don't really have any leads to pursue. Still, it's true I wanted to distance you from the investigation. Is it because... I'm slowing you down? He didn't want me on the investigation. I managed to stifle the shock of hearing him confirm that out loud. Why do you say that? Huh? I was confused to see Yanagi's eyes widen in surprise. When we spoke earlier, I wasn't sure what to do with you, to be honest. Me? Yeah. A more objective observer would say that we should use you as much as we can. Especially since the person on the other side of that collar wants us to investigate x -day. Maybe we'll get something from the collar, and we can exclude you if we want to keep it from them. On top of that, if you're involved, the criminals might make contact with us. Then why? I never told you why I quit the police. Huh? You see, I want to protect everything. <sighs> I want to protect all of it. Yes, everything. Even things rules stop the police from protecting. You may think it's idealism 
or self-delusion. I hate to admit it, but that could be right. Still, I couldn't compromise my principles. That's why I couldn't stay on the force. I wanted to find a way to do this without getting you hurt, if possible. So you're saying you were trying to keep me out of danger? I know that you've been in plenty of danger since the collar was put on you. But that's all the more reason not to send you into any unnecessary danger. It's true that I didn't think much of your own investigative skills. I'm sorry about that. No, Yanagi's sentiments were kind, but... He had acted out of concern for me. His lack of respect for my police skills can be brushed aside because it was obvious. But that was no reason to be complacent. I just wanted to act. I wanted to seize my fate with my own power. This is my own opinion. I don't think it's the safest choice to exclude me. I want to help however I can. I want to have a job and do it well. <laughs> Yanagi wore a pained expression. I held my gaze and channeled my will into it. I wasn't going to back down, no matter what. I understand. Excluding you now wouldn't necessarily protect you. Not as long as I got this collar on. He was quiet for a moment. Finally, he spoke in resignation. But I... That would be problematic, Aiji Yanagi. <laughs> it's never a happy moment to hear from you, collar. A mechanical voice suddenly interrupted us. It was obvious where it had come from. The collar on my neck. We believe our message was clear. If you have her stand idly by after she's expressed her intent to seek X day's truth, we will have no further use for her. We're sure you understand the implications. I shivered. I couldn't suppress the spine-tingling chill. Well, that's the perfect place to stop. All right, Yanagi's splitting things well. Chapter 2 starting, so that's where we're going to end this video. Hear the rest of the message from the caller at the beginning of the next episode. So I hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me. And I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye bye everybody.